You're listening to Hawk Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Hawk Talk, the official podcast series of St. Elsom College Men's Soccer. I'm Tim Field, hosting today, along with Zach Elliott. Once again, we're on Zoom. The state of New Hampshire still has us quarantined, and we're doing our part staying away. Today's episode five of our series, and as you'll see, we're going to be joined by two guests, Josh Plackwitz and Chris Gallier. Both are transfers to the school, and along with Zach, the three of them are all the transfers on our roster. We thought it would be pretty cool to talk to them about what it was like with the transfer process and coming to a new team. If you're watching the video, don't be afraid to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for all things St. Elson Men's Soccer, and turn on notifications bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on Podbean or Apple iTunes. So without further ado, Chris and Josh, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for being on. Thanks for Thank having you. Me. Yeah, so I'll kind of uh, piggyback off Tim. I'll give uh, our audience a quick introduction on both of these guys. Uh, start off, Josh transferred in back in 2018 from Division Three Roger Williams University in Rhode Island. He's been with us for two full years now. He's a business management major from Middleton, Massachusetts, and next year will be his senior year. Um, Chris transferred in, of course, this past fall from NE10 rival St. Michael's College up in Vermont. He's going to be entering his second season in junior year with us this upcoming fall, and he's a business major from Bow, New Hampshire. And as Tim said, I am the third transfer. I also came in as a sophomore back in 2018 um, from conference opponent at the time, Merrimack College, and together we're the three transfers on our roster. So, guys, um, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit here. Just fill our audience in a little more. Um, I'll start with Josh and then Chris jump in right after. What was your experience like at uh, your first college? So for Josh Roger Williams, what was that like? Can you take us through – that process? Yeah, for sure. So um, getting recruited, um, I started talking to them my junior year of high school, and they came to a couple of my games, and I went for an a, uh, overnight there. And um, at the time, I really liked it, really liked the um, location of the school and the coach and the team. But um, as I went through my f- fall semester, freshman year, I just started not to like it anymore and uh, decided it was time to move on. And for you, Chris? Yeah, so kind of the same thing. So, um, like, it was it was my late in my uh, senior year when I decided that St. Mike's was uh, going to be the school. Um, originally, in uh, September of my senior year, I uh, got my first offer from Merrimack. And um, I thought I was going to get more offers. Well, I did. I got one from Assumption and uh, Stonehill, too. But I kind of... Um, wanted to wait and see um, because the Stonehill one was still kind of coming together but that one didn't really work out and then I kind of uh, left the Merrimack one on red unfortunately Um, so that everything kind of just disappeared pretty quickly and then um, I was kind of I was kind of left with St. Mike so I hit up the coach sent him a couple of um, like highlight film stuff like that and uh, met with him a couple times, and then he offered me, and I accepted. So that's when I decided I was going to go to St. Mike's. So I know when you were at St. Mike's, um, you frustrated us pretty bad, uh, scoring a game-winning goal against us on our home field, nonetheless. But uh, I'm glad that you came over and uh, saw the light and found your way to St. A's. So after your freshman year, guys, all three of you made the decision to transfer, which I'm sure wasn't easy. Why did you pick St. A's? And also, what were the difficulties of the transfer process? I I kind of – I liked St. Mike's in the beginning. Uh, I was having fun. I had a good group of friends. And then I decided to visit uh, Taylor one weekend at St. A's. And, you know, I had a lot of fun. And then I realized, like, maybe I kind of like – New Hampshire more than Vermont and I wanted to be close to my family so um, I kind of just realized that New Hampshire was definitely um, the better place for me and um, then later on in my second semester freshman year filled out the uh, common app again the transfer application and then all that got processed and then um, everything was working out and I I got accepted the same age which was really um, really exciting so then just committed to St. A's for the fall. Josh, what was it like for you? Yeah, so um, 
it, it was uh, pretty tough to transfer, obviously. Uh, leaving schools is pretty hard, but uh, decided that it would be for the best. So um, I was looking at a couple other schools, but um, I was also looking at St. A's, obviously, because I knew a couple of guys who were already there, and uh, um, Mike was going there. So I um, thought, why not try it out? And uh, I came up for a practice. It was great practice, and um, I fell in love with the campus, the team, coaching staff. So it was all, it was all good worked out well and i would say that like a difficult thing is just like the transfer uh process itself with um, all the paperwork and stuff but uh courtney definitely helped me out i know she helped out a lot of the other guys uh who were transferring as well so was, uh, she was a lot of help for us yeah so i definitely agree with both of you guys um the main reason why i transferred was to be closer to home be closer to my family so they could come see every game um St. A's is only like 10 minutes from my house, so they can they can come to literally every game, every time we play a home game. Um, Merrimack, that wasn't really the case. They they came to like a few games, but not all of them. Um, and definitely it was a little hard um, making that decision. Um, I didn't really get all the minutes I wanted, and I was just kind of unhappy with how things were going. I didn't really feel like part of a team um, like I do now. And it, it was just – it was hard – to say goodbye to like some of my friends that I had just made on the team. And it was also a little awkward um, talking to my coach so he could release me. Um, so that was definitely difficult. Um, but I just remember being unhappy there and I think it was the best decision to transfer. And as Josh was saying, Courtney definitely helped out with a ton of the paperwork. Um, a lot of like the, the stuff that I would not know how to do without her help. She just made things so smooth. And, and of course coach Tim and coach Bruno brought, me and brought us all in with with open arms um made us feel right at home which was really huge for me especially since i had not really been given a chance before and i was rejected by a few other schools when i was um deciding to transfer so that was huge like knowing that they trusted um me and my abilities bringing me in um so in turn i kind of trusted them and trusted their process and system didn't really go so great at first but i'm really happy with how things are working out now and to be on this team with guys like Josh and Chris. So I got to say, you guys have all three fit in perfectly, um, obviously on the field, but also off the field, which is important. So Josh, a question for you. What was yeah. a big difference in the level of play between D3 and D2? Yeah, so uh, Roger Williams competed in the Commonwealth Coast Conference, which included teams like Gordon and uh, Endicott and Curry College. Uh, all great opponents, but um, it definitely did not compare to uh, the any 10 Division two level. Uh, the level of play um, for D2 was much higher. Guys faster, bigger, older. They come from every country imaginable to come over and play. And um, you don't really get that in D3. You get a lot of uh, more local guys. Still a very, obviously a very good uh, competition, but... I would definitely say that uh, D2 is, uh, was, it's just much faster and uh, the, the speed of play, everything. So D2 is definitely, um, definitely uh, more intense than the D3 level. So, and then Chris, uh, both you and Zach got to play against your old teams. Um, Chris, I know when we went up there, you received a lovely reception from many of the students and the fans. But what was it like playing against your old team? Yeah, so um, the beginning of the first game of the season against St. Mike's was at St. A's, which made it a little more comfortable for me. Um, but yeah, I just remember like in the locker room pregame, and I, I couldn't really focus on anything. I was like wicked nervous because like this is it wasn't like it felt like a playoff game for me, like a must win. Like your old teammates, like you can't lose to them. Like you're just gonna get, get a bunch of crap for it. So um, I was nervous pregame, and I didn't really know what to say. Like, I wanted to say something, but I couldn't really get the words out because I was so nervous. But then um, Zach was like, hey, like, um, I know, like, I was in Chris' position last year, but I'm, I'm sure he, like, doesn't want you guys to do anything crazy, but, you know, just give it, like, your best. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I was asking for or what I wanted to say. And, um, yeah, we uh, performed pretty well. And when we won, th three, we won the first game, and then – made it a little more comfortable going back up to St. Mike's um, with their fan section. And then, um, you know, just 
after the uh, first game when they called it after what like sixty eight minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, that kind of made not only me frustrated, but pretty much like the whole team that we had to get like another game organized in the in our busy week already, and we played like four games in like a week or something. Mm-hmm. And um, you know we had to go back up there and you know like took care of business again, which is good. Um, so yeah, it was successful. Yeah. So like Chris was saying, it was definitely, definitely felt like a really important game when I played against my old school in Merrimack two years ago. Uh, it was definitely a very special kind of moment for me because as I said before, I didn't really feel like I got the opportunity to really show what I had at Merrimack. So when I joined St. A's, you know, and we had that game against Merrimack kind of middle of the season, it was really one of the first times that I, um, kind of realized that I was in the place I wanted to be with the guys that I wanted to be because um, Chris was just telling a story the year before he got there when we were playing Merrimack in the locker room I was just saying to the guys like listen all I want you guys to do is just give 100% for me uh, it would really mean a lot and we went out there and we left everything on the field and just to see all the guys do that for me in that game was was really special um, we lost with 10 minutes left one to zero but um, just to see that fight um, for me in that important game was, was definitely something special. So, yeah, I I can't speak for both of you guys, um, Josh and Chris, but I feel like the change to St. A's has been a lot healthier for me compared to where I was at before. Um, Do you guys feel the same at all? And how is this program kind of different from your past in terms of how you've came in and gelled with the guys on the team? Um. Yeah, so at St. Mike's, it was um, a little weird coming in because I didn't know um, a group of people like I did at St. A's. So I was kind of just on my own, had to make it work out on my own. So, I mean, I, I, I liked everybody on the team, but I wasn't really uh, close to everybody as I am on St. A's. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really have like a good connection with um, – or the connection that I wanted with the kids at St. Mike's. But um, – but as soon as I came to St. A's, you know, it was just, like, amazing, like, the change. Like, I, I'm friends with, like, everybody on the team. Like, I, it's, I can talk to anybody normally. And, you know, like, I, like, look forward to seeing the guys, like, every day, like, the practice, like, film, whatever it is, games, like, stuff like that. And they're, they're a lot of fun. So, and especially having the group, like, all the GPS kids made it a lot easier, too. How about for you, Josh? Yeah, same thing. So, I knew a couple of guys coming in, uh, which obviously helps for uh, gelling. But uh, I feel like we just gel really well as a team on and off the field, which um, definitely helped us last season to be successful. But um, I just I just feel like everyone has each other's backs and we're willing to give it all 110% no matter what we do for each other. And it's just a great experience to be a part of. So I can tell you as a coach, uh, we saw a huge difference. I mean, obviously we won six more games than we did the the year before. Um, I think part of it could be on Chris's throw-ins and his fake that he throws out there every time. (laughs) But, uh, you know, with that momentum, guys, uh, and Josh, this is going to be your senior season. Yeah. What do you think about this team moving forward? What are your thoughts going into the fall? Yeah, so – Definitely, definitely fired up to get going, especially without a uh, spring season. But uh, I think uh, all the guys will come in prepared. We're all going to be ready. And uh, I know a goal for all of us is to, uh, even from last year, win some more games than any 10, win our um, out-of-conference games as well. But uh, I think our ultimate goal is to uh, make the playoffs. Definitely want to do that uh, my senior year. So definitely a goal for mine. How about you, Chris? Um, yeah, I think everybody is improving each year. Um, so, and then, like, especially last year, preseason, we talked about how we're going to take it um, game by game, not really focus on playoffs. But obviously, playoffs is definitely um, more than reasonable for this upcoming year, I feel like, because, um, you know, everybody's committed. Um, and, you know, like, we're winning more than we did in the past. So, um, and we're always asking to do like extra work and we're always there for the lift. Like everybody's committed. And even like, you could tell like at the end of last season, like we were supposed to have two weeks apart. And then like within like two days, we like got together and we were already talking about like 
improvements we want to make for like next season. So I mean, that just kind of shows how much we're looking forward to next season, how much we can uh, like believe in ourselves. So I, I agree with you guys. I think I think we're we're set up well to be able to go in having a spring season would have helped tremendously, but you know, there's nothing we can do about that now. So the next segment is our lightning round. This is when we're going to ask you guys five rapid fire questions. And I just want you to give me your answer as quickly as you can. I'm not expecting you to put a lot of thought into this, but this will really show everyone who you guys really are. So, Josh, I'm going to start with you, and then, Chris, you can answer after him. What's your most memorable moment as a Hawk so far in your career? Uh, I would say last season, uh, winning our uh, first game of the year. I think that just really set us up for the rest of the season and to have the success that we did uh, have. So I think I would definitely say it was that first game last year. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I was pretty nervous coming in the first game last year, Josh said. Um, but that was definitely the most memorable game. And uh, probably just launching the three ball to Mike and then him scoring. I was like, all right, this is pretty, this is pretty good. <laughs> so I, I got to say, uh, Chris hit about a 45-yard pass that hit Mike on the run in the chest, and he took a couple touches and buried it. And to me, that was the pass of the year, no doubt about it. Okay, so Chris, you're going to start with this question. Who was the biggest beast in the weight room? The weight room? Uh, oh geez, I'd say probably Pat, because because he was working. I don't. Know, I feel like I always saw him doing like the the ropes and stuff, and then like towards the end, he was like, <laughs> like back on like the bench and stuff. So he's he is shredded. Of, he is he's shredded. He's yeah. Like next year. So Josh, who would you say it is? Um, I would have to go with Quent. He uh, he's a big boy and puts up a lot of weight. So. Uh, you center him. backs just want to stay together, don't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what it is. So, and going back to you, Josh, and I'm not going to tell you what my notes say. Who is the messiest guy on the team? Ooh, that's that's hmm, that's got to be Mike. I'm going with Mike. Chris, hundred percent Taylor. His like stuff is always in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> His locker. I got to tell you, and I'm just going to put it this way. My notes have one of your two names on that, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> probably, you probably said the same. Not me. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, <laughs> what's the best part about being on a soccer team? Um, probably just having, like, the connections with, like, all the friends. Like, I know, like, coming into St. Mike's, um, some of my other friends didn't really have, like, um, like a team that they were on, and – um, I know, like, I talked to, like, my friends about, like, how it's so much easier coming into college, like, knowing people in preseason, and then, like, that helped, like, transitioning to school. So, just kind of making connections early on, um, it, was, it was a lot easier for me. Josh, what do you think? I just think it's just being, uh, like, we're all friends off the field. Uh, we all have good time together, no matter where we are, uh, dining hall, games, anything. So, we're always together, always having a good time. So, it's definitely a... Um, fun team to be a part of and um i know we always want to be with each other all the time so it's good so josh what's your goal after college my goal after college is um well i run a landscaping business now so i just uh plan to scale that and uh keep going with that if anyone ever needs a reference for <laughs> jp landscaping they can call me directly yep, I am call Tim. <laughs> chris what's your goal after college um, I'm probably going to do, um, a couple internships with, uh, different aspects of, um, the business world, I guess. Um, and then hopefully play around with that and see which, uh, which kind of area I feel more comfortable in and like. Definitely some good answers there. The guys are going to love those, I'm sure. Uh, but that's all we got for today. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you saw in today's episode, don't be afraid to hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, ideas, or any interest in being on a future episode, email Tim Field, T I M F I E L D, at anselm.edu. And if you can't watch the next episode and can only listen to it while you're working from home during this quarantine, check us out on our podcast page on Podbean or Apple iTunes to listen. And lastly, 
go check out our Instagram page at St. Ansel Men's Soccer for all updates. We'll be back soon with more episodes. Stay healthy and safe, everyone.